Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome back and welcome to my new subscribers. Welcome Holly, my latest new subscriber who subscribed this morning and left me a comment. Hello there. Uh, yeah, right, we're back with another part in the Butterfly Junk Journal. We've done the cover, well, we've done the base of the cover. I've showed you what pages I'm going to use. And I showed you a few pages that I wanted to recreate. Pages that I've taken out of my ideas journal. And this is the one I want to do. Yeah, it's an interactive page. We've got a flippy flap there. So you can pop something in. We've got a pocket behind there. And there's a pocket there. And the back is backed with tea dyed paper. Because it had to hide the magnets. Right. I love that sound. Once more. Just one more. Right, stop. Right, I'm going to use paper from the same book. It's the Victorian Flower Album by Henry Terry. I think this is running about £10 at minute. which is, it, it does go cheaper, but I don't think that's too bad. It's one of those books where, look, you can just use every little piece of the book. So compare it to the price of a paper pad, and I think £10 for this is good value, because every little scrap gets used. Yeah, there was a page with butterflies on, but I've took that out and used it for something else. I must have, because it's not there. It's the only page gone out of the book. But we'll just have to stick his own flowers on, butterflies on a flower, won't we? Right, so I'm just going to choose a page to use. It doesn't really matter. We're only going to see half the page. But I want a page that I can fold. If you look at this bit here... Yep, that is part of a page. I've folded it and then stuck it on and sewn around, yeah? So it becomes the flap, but that's one piece. The rest of it is one piece, and then that pocket is another piece stuck on. So I just want to make sure we've, we're going to use a, page, a couple of pages that are going to match. And I do like my pink. Now, I don't like that, so... I'm thinking that's an ideal candidate for the back when it's going to be covered in copy dyed paper. So I think I'm going to use some from around here. Let's find the cotton and let's take some pages out. Using the bent end on my Timolt scissors again, which is fabulous. <laughs> Happy accident that was, wasn't it? Ooh, someone outside is using the lawnmower, making me feel guilty. I just turned camera on to film this video and my new lawnmower got delivered so I thought mm, shall I mount lawn or shall I do a video well I think you can judge what I decided right let's take two pages out yeah there's very small signatures in this there's lots of separate little signatures two pages to a signature which is unusual really isn't it but yeah it's a gorgeous book I'm sure Tanya at Tatty Treasures has done a flip through on this book. I'll try and link it if I can find it, but probably by the end of the video I will have forgot. So I've always got Tanya's link on my videos at bottom. Apart from a few videos ago when I'd not copied and pasted far enough and left it off. Sorry Tanya. Right. So. Let's have a look here. So we're going to see... What's... <laughs> Look at that. I'm thinking, why won't that lay flat? My magnets that I've got out on the desk ready to use have attached to the magnet in the page. So, yeah, I've got a handle on that. Take them off. Very strong little suckers they are. Right, yeah. So we're going to see the centre of the page. So let's have a look see. That would look good. Ah, that wouldn't look good. We'd want to cover that up, but then I like that. But then you can't have your cake and eat it, can you? When a book's this gorgeous, if you've got to cover a side up, you've got to cover one up. So, yeah, I, I like that as the centre. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut that from the crease to the width we want the page. And the journal pages are roughly A5, which is about eight and a quarter by five and a quarter. Is that right? Is it five and a quarter or five and three quarters? I'm going to have to measure one now to see, because I really didn't know. Grab an A5. Well, that's A4 folded in half. That's five and three quarters. I could have made a really bad mistake there. 
So if I want this page nearer the front of the journal, I want to cut it nearer the five and three quarters. If I want it nearer the centre, it's going to be perhaps nearer five and a quarter. I think I'm going to go in between and go five and a half, yeah? So it'll not be at the middle, not be at the front, somewhere in between. So I'm going to cut this to five and a half inches wide. Chop. <laughs> then I need to cut it to eight, eight, in, eight and a quarter inches, because that's the height of our page. I just need to take, ooh, yeah, one eighth of a inch off, because it's, oh no, it's not, hang on, what is it? Eight and... Oh, it's eight and one, two, three eighths. And I want it to be eight and a quarter. Yes, yeah, so I need to take an eighth off. Yeah, I was right first time. I'm going to just guess that. I really am going to guesstimate what an eighth of an inch is. And I'm going to take it off the bottom. I've got a little bit more than an eighth, yeah? Then I know it's going to fit nicely in the journal. And then I, sh I should have got a big chopper out and done this all together, but who can be bothered to do that? I'm just going to take the same off the bottom of these pages that I cut off. And to measure it, I'm going to use the bit I cut off. Yep, yeah, measure it up. That's right. Done. I'll just check that same. See if anything needs a nibble. Nah, perfect. It's, something's going to go wrong now. That went too easy, that did. I'm going to need chopper again. I'll just put it the floor inside of me. So... Yeah, that is going to be the back that gets covered up with coffee dyed paper. This is going to be the bit we see. So we want to make a flap and we want to make a pocket. I've just realised now why I made the flap the size I made it, because of the size of the page I've got left. So I'm thinking I'm going to use another book page for this because I want my flap to be bigger this time. I really do. If you look at this one, you've got the pocket there and the flap fastens there. So you can't, yeah, it won't enclose and hide what's in the pocket. So I'm going to use the other page and I'm going to make my flap and pocket slightly wider. So if I want my flap to end there, ish, that will take me to... I need to leave room for a tab, so if I say four and a half inches, and then if I want the pocket underneath to be, say, two and a half, so that's seven inches. I want a seven inch chunk book page. I'll use these others for something else, don't worry, none of this gets wasted. So let's grab the other book page that we took out. And I'm going to get myself a seven inch chunk of book page. And I'm going to have to get the big chopper up now to measure seven inches. So. Ooh, that would be nice. Is the flap, wouldn't it? Yeah, so I'm going to cut my seven from there. Oh, what about that? No, stop overthinking it now, woman. Just cut a seven inch chunk of book page. It'll be perfect. That's what she says. Oh, look, I've found a butterfly now. Didn't know that one we're in. And I'm just going to adjust the height of this as well. I'll grab my other paper, measure what we made it. Yeah, I cut it down to a smidgen over eight, actually. I'm going to take it off the bottom again. Make this a smidgen over eight, just a smidge. And that's that. I hope you're following this. So we've cut one book page down to five and a half inches wide. And then we've cut a seven inch wide piece of another book page. Yeah. So we're then going to fold this to make a pocket and a flap. I've not decided which way around to do it. I want that. I like that. I want to see that. Yeah. So we said we wanted the flap to end about there, didn't we? So I'm just eyeballing this. It's perhaps not going to be spot on. You see, I'm just lining it up with... If I move the tea dyed paper from underneath, you might be able to see better. Is 
long as that flaps longer than that pocket I'm an happy bunny and we've got enough room to put a tag on there so I'm gonna do it there I'm gonna just crease it and then I'll tell you where it ended up measuring Ooh, Tito paper you're not needed at the moment so did oh, look at the magnets again sticky little suckers so four and a quarter that ended up being and the pocket is two and three quarters it's not far off what I guesstimated so yeah I'm going to yeah I did I did sew around the edge of that pocket yeah so what I'm going to need to do before yeah, cause everything else is going to get sewn completely around we just need to sew the edges of the pockets before we start sticking things down and popping magnets on don't we yeah yeah we do right oh where's my original one gone come back original pocket can't copy her if you disappear yes aha yes yes the magnet went in the tab yeah i was just trying to remember where where on earth i put the magnet in the tab silly woman so that's going to be that pocket there let's take one of these other off cuts and make a pocket for the right hand side i think i might as well come in and use that adna oh yes then i get the butterfly on that pocket edge i'm going to do it So if I just cut that along the crease, yeah, that will then be my pocket on that side and we'll get the butterfly on. Do I want the pocket? I'm going to leave it that size. Yeah, then we haven't got a big chunk of that dark green leaf sticking out. So that might look a bit odd. So yeah, I just need to cut the height down a little bit on that. So I'll get one of my smidgens. Shall I do it top or bottom? I'll do it top, then I don't lose. Oh, we're not going to see that right, and it's on the other side. I'll do it bottom. So I'm measuring a little smidgen of paper. That. Right, so I'm just going to go away. You'll not notice I've gone. So I'm just going to pause. The, the chopper collapsed, just ignore it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew down the edge of there and down the edge of there. I've not doubled this paper over because it is quite thick and robust. It doesn't need to be double to make the edge of the pocket, but it will be, it'll just strengthen it a bit having some sewn edge on it. Yeah. Let's ink it as well first. Do you want to see me ink? You can see me ink if I could find my door, but let's use dark one. That big one, I mean. I don't know what ink I've got on here. I'm not too bothered. I know it's a dark one because that's all I use this for. It also gives that edge a bit of definition so you can see the pocket better. I want to use a light thread like I did on the last one. Because the, the paper is the focus. And if I run a big line of dark stitching around the edge, it might just draw your eye away. And we don't want that, do we? So, yeah. All I'm going to do is stitch down those two edges and I'll be back two ticks. And I'm back. So if you can see, I've just stitched. I've started my stitch just before so that when I stitch around the whole edge of the piece, it will over stitch that and hold it in. Yeah, and just carried on after. So I've got my stitching along that edge and the same on that piece. And I fibbed. I haven't used light cotton. When I grabbed my sewing machine, it still got that lovely green cotton in that I'd used from a vintage romance journal, which is still for sale in my Etsy shop, by the way, if anyone's interested. Uh, so I've used that. Right, now I'm going to come in and do some gluing. So the first thing I'm going to do is glue this page on here as I want it. Yeah. So there we go. I'm tempted to round these corners because I've just noticed this book page has got, it's just a little bit damaged. Would it look good with rounded corners, do we think? Just that flap. Oh, I've rounded those corners. See, <laughs> that must have been a blooming good idea because I had it twice. Use that upside down, it works much better. Well, it does for me. 
there we go do i want a bigger round than that no that'll do me i don't think i had this tiny corner round when i made that page i really quite like this small one it's a four millimeter it's the only reason i put it with that punch being a bit dodgy so i'm going to grab my glue i'm on with my anita's tacky glue i've gone ahead and put the metal tip on from my art glitter now it's died on me it's run out so we'll, i'll see how we get on it did work when i first put it on we'll see whether it's clogged up won't we so i'm just going to put glue along there i'm and a little bit along there yeah on that edge so here we go oh, i should have had it upside down ready is it gonna work oh yes it's coming out lovely so along there I find it harder to squeeze though this big bottle. Oh, I'm shaking, look. I'm shaking. <laughs> so let's go along there, and then along just before the crease. I think it's a two hand job, this. Oh, it's perfect with two hands. I've not put in loads there because I'm going to sew that as well. Same here. I don't overdo it with the glue when I'm stitching as well. I don't find it necessary. I'm just turning this round so that I can get it on perfectly at the edge. Let's have a look. Oh, it's it's slipped a bit. It's this is very shiny, slippy paper. Try it. Oops. Try it just that way, woman. What I do like is you get a bit more wiggle time than with the art glitter. It seems to be holding as well. It seems to not wrinkle my paper. But do you know if that had been art glitter, I, I might have been stuffed there. I might have had to just peel it off and put more glue on and do the old thing again. That's uh, that's good. I like that. Pity we're not going to see that, isn't it? It's a real shame. But we had to lose something. So I like that. I like that much better already than my original page. I'll show you the comparison. Because that flap is longer and it will cover. I'll be able to cover what's in that pocket. So, yeah. And we can also... I could even put a pocket in there, couldn't I? Yeah, yeah, I could. So that whatever's in there isn't just hidden in and can't slip out the bottom that's an option i may put a pocket there yeah i think i might i really think i might so that's stuck on i'm now going to stick this page on i definitely need to buy a small bottle for this glue 100 percent oh it's flowing okay now i'm getting it out with one hand Took that in. I can trim those off when we've done the sewing around the perimeter of the page. Am I happy with that? I'm very happy with that. Right, so that will be our magnetic flap. That will be our pocket page right i'm gonna grab one of my you don't have to use this shape of tab i'm using them because i've got them i'm gonna use a do i want a big one or a little one i think i want a big one yeah i like the color i'm just gonna ink around the edges I'm not going to stick it on yet, but I need to place it so that I can decide where the magnet needs to stick on the other side, if you get what I mean. Right, so I'm going to fold my tab. So your tab needs to be big enough to hide a magnet. So that's going to go on there. Yeah, and the magnet's going to go on the other side. So... Yeah. How did I do it? Yeah. I think I glued the magnet in and then I just slid that on after. Yes, I did. So let's grab these little magnets. Right. Uh, I've got these in my Amazon storefront. 
I don't buy branded ones. These are a lot cheaper. I think I'll check the current price. These one, th these 0 0.8, they're not quite a centimetre. 0 0.8, I think. Yeah, the eight millimetres. Yeah, and they are one millimetre thick, which is quite thin. These smaller ones, I don't think these are available at the minute. They're six millimetre and one millimetre thick. But this is a big chunky page, so I want I want these that are almost a centimetre. I'm not going to use that end one because it's quite chipped. It's the end magnet. It ends up attaching to everything and it gets chipped. So I just put that chip one back on end, ready for getting chipped on something else. Because they will chip and break these magnets. They're very strong, but they can be delicate. So I'm just going to take one. It doesn't matter which side I put it on. They don't. They're not measured. They're not. Uh, marked with plus and minus but I don't I don't I don't feel the need to have it marked with plus and minus if that makes sense right they're also not self-adhesive now there are many things you can glue these with you can glue them with e6000 you can glue them with you can glue them with art glitter but as I've just said mine's run out or you can use glossy accents but glossy accents takes a while to dry can you hear me rummaging in my drawer so what i use is i use a bit of this double-sided tape for the first side to get it stuck i just grab my tape i stick my magnet on and then i cut around it i don't find that a hardship to be quite honest you know me, I ought to save a penny or three. <laughs> no, so you've got to balance the time against the cost, haven't you? And the horrendous cost of the magnets that come ready sticky with pluses and minuses on them. I I, I can't justify that for myself. And I don't have trouble with the ones without that. If you do need that, you go for that. Depends how many magnets you use as well. When I was doing mini albums, I used so many magnets. Right, you might put 10, 12 magnets in one mini album. And then when you're buying a pack of 10, 20 magnets for £20, you really don't want to be spending that, do you? I think these were 6 99 for 20 magnets. So that'll get you 10 closures. Right, so I've just burnished my sticky tape onto the magnet. Now I'm going to peel the backing off. And I'm going to pop it where I want it, inside that. There we go. So it's stuck on one side. That were it. I just stuck it on one side. Yeah. It's all coming back to me now. Sorry for, yeah, really not doing Celine, Celine Dion justice there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop my other magnet on there where it needs to stick. And I'm just going to leave it. It will decide itself which way around it needs to be can you see your magnets have your north and south pole don't they they will put themselves where they want to be then you can slide it about like magic <laughs> so then i decide where that needs to be that's looking good yeah so i'm going to turn it back over now this time when i take that magnet off i'm going to remember which side the sticky needs to be on Gonna grab a bit more of my sticky. You can do this with glue. I just find this easier if I use something that sticks it permanently straight away. Yeah. I mean, it does dry pretty quick with our glitter. But as we've just said, I don't have any. The tacky glue takes a little bit longer to dry, but I will be gluing the other sides of each magnet with the tacky glue. So I've trimmed my little bit of sticky. I'm just going to burnish it with my nail this time. There you go. And I'm going to peel that off. Right. Let's turn, turn it back off. I've lost my place now. I'm going to pop that exactly where it needs to be. I am now worried that I didn't... That's it. That needs to be the bottom. The magnet on the bottom. I could hold that on with some kind of clip, but I'm just, I'm going to just lift it up. 
I'm struggling with this, aren't I? Right, I'm underneath. I'm making sure my tab is where it wants to be. I've got my sticky on my magnet and I'm just going to let go of my magnet while holding this tab and the magnet will find its pair. Go on, you can do it. It's done it. There we go. So the other magnet is stuck on in the correct place. That tab is stuck on exactly where it needs to be. And I can now take the tab off. We know that magnet's where it wants to be. And I can do my sewing on the sewing machine, yeah? Without having to sew through my tab, which I didn't want to do. If you don't mind sewing through your tab, stick it on permanently, yeah? Or if you're not sewing, stick it on permanently. And you don't have to go through all that rigmarole I just did to decide where to put my magnet. Right. Let's turn it over because the other thing we need to do now is put some coffee dyed paper on the back. So I've got my folded piece here. I'm going to line it up. Yeah, it's the right height. So I'm just going to go ahead again and I'm going to put some glue on. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm only gluing the edges this time because I don't want... Do you know, I did this last time. I don't need to put coffee dyed paper on that side, do I? No, I only really need to put it on that side. So do you know what? I'm only going to put coffee dyed paper on that one side. But then I'd need to sew again up the middle, wouldn't I? I don't like that picture. Just cover it all up, woman. Go back to plan A, because plan B is not your best work. Yeah. So, this time I'm going to use my Kalal, because it's good for... Yeah, this. It won't wrinkle it. I don't need to be have loads around the edge, because I'm going to sew. But I want it all stuck down. I'm not going to go directly on the crease where I want to sew through. Just in case it is a bit sticky. I don't think I've ever sewn through Kalal when binding. But Kalal can dry a little bit stiff. It stiffens your paper up. Which on a page like this is a good thing. So I'm just going to put it all over. I've not cut it down to length yet. I'll do that after I've put it on. And to get it lined up properly i'm going to take that page and just like i'm putting two signatures together for a journal i'm going to do it like that we've got the height right it's a little bit taller actually as well than the page so we've got to trim that as well then i'm going to flatten it out and just get it all stuck on it does come to the top so i'll just need to sew around that uh, trim around that the cloud does stick pretty quick, so I can come in and do that now while it's drying. I'm going to get my big scissors. I'm not going to start doing using my chopper because I could cut off that fold, which I don't want to do. And when I've got something to follow, I can actually use big scissors. Woohoo! Who knew? And also, I'm trying not to be too perfect with this journal. This really is the only complicated page, but it is so worth it. And just trim along that top as well. Okay, I'm not caring if it's perfect, because... I'm not after perfection on this journal. I'm after pretty. Don't, do I need to try? I've done that side, have I? No, I, I haven't, have I? I must have. Yeah, I have. Oh, woman. Now, that's a memory for you, isn't it? Cutting around four sides of an A4 page, and by the time you've cut round, you've forgot where you started. I keep having those moments where I think of something I need to do on my phone or tablet or laptop and by the time I've got it and opened it I sit there looking blank thinking right why am I here? Why am I here? What am I doing? So then you just end up doing something you didn't ought to be like browsing YouTube when you should be working and <laughs> 
And yesterday, kids kept nicking my phone because apparently I, don't, I can't. I don't know why. I'm not. It's not that I don't care. I just have trouble remembering. For some reason, they were they were blocking TikTok. Yeah, they weren't using TikTok yesterday. It was some supposed to be some protest against something or other. Not using TikTok, so they kept nicking my phone to go on Instagram Reels. So now I'm going to get all sorts of rubbish recommended to me when I go back on Instagram. So yeah, if anyone commented or messaged or did anything yesterday and thought I were really ignorant, not answering back because I were on there, I wasn't. The children had stolen it. Right, that's all nice and glued. Oh, I'm liking this page already and I haven't even finished it. And I'm just going to go ahead now and I'm going to sew around the complete perimeter. I wonder if I can angle my camera so you can see. I'm going to pause and I may be back with sewing or I may be back sewn. That's going to be a real nail biter for you, isn't it? Two ticks. Here I am ready to sew. I hope you can see this. The bit that's on the sewing machine is actually... <laughs> it's under the part that holds the camera. I'm just going to move this pile of uh, stuff that I'm using in the journal because... I've got my sewing machine at a slightly different angle to show you. Yeah, so I'm going to just sew around the perimeter of the journal. Right, I always pick a point to start an overlap that's either going to be covered or at the bottom. I'm going to do it here. I'm going to start here. And I used, I used, I don't know what this foot is called. I hope you can see it. Rather than your regular foot. And I lined the edge of that foot up with the edge of my paper. So I get my nice even edge all the way around. So let's hold me. So, there we go. I'm going to have to fold that up. Because again, like I say, I'm not in the usual place. I'm actually not sewing as perfect as I usually do. But that's not a bad thing. And I'm coming to the corner. Now, my sewing machine, it's a foot pedal, it's not very easy to manoeuvre. So what I tend to do is I tend to lift my foot up and move the paper. I know if you've got a fancy electric one with push buttons and that, you don't have to do that, but I don't. So that's how I do my corners. And I do tend to whiz, I really do. Life's too short to go slow on your sewing machine, in my opinion. So that's, that corner only took one stitch. There we go. Wizzy wizzy. Let's get busy. Just make sure that's not getting caught behind. I always slow down when I come to like a crease or something like that though. Went a bit wonky talking then, but I'm not bothered. And if my stitch is going to be too far down, I just lift my foot and move it like that. And get it where I want it to be hold the cotton out of the way because I'm very good at sewing over it and I'm going to finish there sorted I have got an automatic needle thread needle yeah thread cutter but if I use it I'll probably knock camera off its tripod right so I'm going to pause while I put the camera back right there we have it you saw me sewing on camera uh yeah I did Yes, yes. Kayung, Kayung, who's got a channel, Kayung Shotwell, absolutely brilliant she is. She did me a video to show me how she angles her camera so that she can show the sewing machine and the desk without moving it a great deal. But I think I'd end up killing my camera and my uh, tripod, so I'm not going to do it. But if that's turned all right when I watch this video back, I'll do it like that. If it hasn't, you'll see me say I'm going to sew and then you'll see it all cut out. Because what I'm concerned about is that all you could see was the glare from the light on the sewing machine, which you'll see. Anyway, stop waffling and get on with it. I've zoomed in a bit more now so you can see the page. So I just absolutely love this page. I really do. Yeah. 
we've not got oh i've got to sew I've, there's something i forgot to sew i need to sew down there yeah to hold that i do yeah so what i normally do is i go down there and then back up and i forgot to do it but i'm going to do that off camera you get the gist yeah oh, i knew i'd miss some of my sewing off but we can still go ahead and put this on which is what we want to do look Ta da! and it fits <laughs> So I'm going to put some glue, I'm going to leave that where it is, I'm going to pop some glue there, and on the magnet, and there. Yeah, I'm quite liking the metal tip on this and eaters. Like I said, the only reason I'm struggling is because I've got this huge bottle that's four times as big as my usual art glitter. And then that is going to go there. I'm just going to lift this up. No, I'm not going to lift it up. I'm going to let that stick before I even think of lifting that up. Otherwise, it could just go all horribly wrong. So, that's that. So, there we have it. An interactive page. And I really like it. I just need to sew that. I'll do it off camera. You've seen exactly how to do it now. Right, I will just give you the measurements. If, if you want to do it exactly the same. I know I worked it out just to match so that I got pictures how and where I wanted them. So, the whole width of that first piece is 11 inches. Yeah? So if you do it folded in half, it needs to be five and a half. My ruler's stuck to the magnet now. That's the only issue with these magnets. <laughs> the height is, I did do it eight and end, eight and a smidgen that's not worth talking about. I'm going to measure you this pocket. I then did the pocket at three and three quarters. We will open this now. You're not going to move, are you? No, you'll be fine. And I then cut a piece, was it seven inches? Seven inches wide to stick on once it were folded to make a pocket and a flap. Yeah. So that's it, and then the whole back of it was backed with tea dyed paper to cover it where the magnet was. And like I say, you don't need to back the other side. I could have put another pocket on or whatever, but I decided I did want to. That Yeah, I would have had to sew down there, and I didn't want to. Enough sewing on there. I didn't want that bit in the middle ruined with sewing. And I do like that I've used that, uh, it's like a mossy green thread. Uh, we can even make something to tuck in the pocket out of that page, can't we? I'd have to make it smaller, of course. But that will get used, don't fret. I use every inch of this page. So, I'm going to leave that one there. Uh, I will link the video where I showed you how to do the interactive coffee dyed papers, yeah, rather than do it again. Yeah, it was in my, I think it was in my Edith Holden junk journal a while back so I'll put all those links in my description so I really hope you enjoyed that and yeah I will see you next time uh, I'm going to stick to doing this journal on weekends so this will be your last butterfly junk journal video this weekend you may get the odd one or two butterfly ephemera ones in the week so tomorrow I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow I can just pick something Tuesday I'm starting my junk mail journal series as well and I'm making that part of my Tatty Treasure Tuesdays. Because uh, Tanya at Tatty Treasure has done one. I think it's almost finished now. And she was following along with Izzy B of Izzy B Craft Creations. And at the time I said I wish I had time to do that. But I didn't. But I'm going to start it now. And I'll be linking Tanya and Izzy each time. So thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, one more thing. I did think, did I mention it in my last video? I'll mention it again. If you see that the comments are turned off in my video, YouTube are being, I don't know, they just keep turning my comments off because they say my content is aimed at children. So please, this is adult content, not adult. I see. <laughs> oh, see, don't even go there, yeah? Responsible people over the age of 13, yes? Right, so enough said. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye.